Um, 47. 47. Back up your hands to all your peoples. Shout to God with a voice of triumph. The Lord Most High is awesome. He is the great King over all the earth. He will subdue the peoples under us and the nations under our feet. He will choose the inheritance for us. The excellent Jacob whom he loves. God has gone up with a shout. The Lord with the sound of the trumpet. Sing praises to our God, sing praises. Sing praises to our King, sing praises. For God is King of all the earth. Sing praises with understanding. God reigns over a nation. God sits on his holy throne. The prince of people have gathered together. The people of the God of Abraham. For the shields of belong to the Lord. And he is greatly exalted. So Psalm 47. Last Psalm in the third hour. Uh, yeah, last time to put out. So it's it's a it's a joyful psalm, uh, and it's it's, it's used in the Coptic Church in each liturgy. Uh, we'll touch upon that in a second. Um, the title is "To the Chief Musician: A Psalm of the Sons of Korah, and the Praise to God, the Ruler of the Earth." So, like we said, it's a psalm of our praise, uh, giving praise to God. Uh, it also has messianic uh, uh, aspects, which we'll see. It is probably, at least, uh, quite possibly written um, uh, related to the time of King Jehoshaphat, Second Corinthians twenty. So we'll get that. Yeah. So you can read that in uh, Second Corinthians twenty, the victory of um, King Jehoshaphat, uh, one of the kings of Judah, um, and then and then he pray, they praised together. They went out before the army and they were saying, "Praise the Lord for His mercy endures forever." So that's definitely a possibility. Um, but more, I think, more this psalm is about Christ, uh, messianic psalm about Christ. Why? It's very simple, like other psalms, because His throne will reign forever. God sits on His holy throne, capital H, and the word reigning. Okay, God reigns over the nations. In the end, the king doesn't really reign. Yeah, yeah, like it doesn't, it doesn't reign really. Like I mean, it may reign over a certain area, but God reigns over him. <laughs> uh, so, um, so definitely God. It's a messianic about Christ. God sits on His holy throne. Only, only Christ's throne is is holy. Uh, verse one: uh, Clap your, hand, your hands, all your peoples. Shout to God with a voice of triumph. Um, See, the clapping here, it can be, uh, sometimes when we think of clapping, uh, we think of clapping like in a negative sense. You know, people clap sarcastically. If you're on a sporting match and you clap, yes, well done, well done, they get in trouble. Uh, but obviously, the clapping here is referring to a positive sense, a, a form of praise. Uh, and it's used in other parts, other, other parts of the Bible. Um, and I think what's also important about clapping is that it uses the body. So, yes, we may not clap literally in the mass. I mean, certainly not the Coptic Church. Maybe in other cultures, like if you go to, I think I was watching a video of the Ethiopians and the rich and that kind of culture. The Fijians, we had Fijian um, priest and deacon here. And they, they, and when they their culture and they go and in the liturgy, I've seen videos, I think he sent us a video once. And they, 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 they're big on this kind of culture and the clapping and so forth. Um, so the clapping is definitely a, a form of positive praise, also using our body as a form of prayer. And we try to use our body as much as possible to keep the, to body, align the body with the mind. If, the, if uh, uh, Saint Ephraim says, uh, if your body is not praying when you're praying, you're not really praying. So we want to use the body, we want to be active in, in reverence and standing up and using everything that we can in the physical sense to try to get the spiritual sense going. So I think that's one thing to touch upon with the clapping. Um, and uh, it says here, all you people. So yeah, everyone needs to praise God. Uh, it's not limited to a certain group. Everyone will praises God. And even if someone doesn't praise God, in the end, everyone will praise God in, in the day of judgment. Um, just maybe one uh, once uh, another couple psalm touches on that. So Psalm ninety eight, which is in the ninth hour, let the rivers clap their hands. The hills be joyful together. 
So yeah, let the rivers clap their hands and the hills be joyful together. Um, and the other part of verse one, shout to God with a voice of triumph. So, uh, you know, there's a famous song, uh, you know, like, you know, one of the names of the melodies, uh, shout to God, shout to the Lord. I, I'm not really a big fan of that, 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 uh, that kind of stuff style. But um, the point is, um, uh, shouting to God, it's an expression of our love and our desire to praise God, okay, the ruler of the earth. So we don't just do it suddenly, we want to shout because uh, we're so much overwhelmed with joy and, and, and praise and we kind of like hold it in in a sense. So we want to shout out and just have an outburst of joy and praise. I think that's the theme of the uh, shouting to God with the voice of triumph. Um, we do see the, uh, even uh, when you come to the story and Joshua comes to my mind, when they shout out in their victory over Jericho, it doesn't, he doesn't do it silently since he wants to shout and proclaim and proclaim. Uh, that's what the shouting comes from. It's a proclamation. I'm not sure you're familiar with the story, but uh, just see it to emphasize till the day that I say to you, shout, Joshua 6. And then they do shout later on, shout, for the Lord has given you the city. And I think, it, I think it's, yeah, so the pe people shouted. When the people shouted, and they blew the trumpets. It's good because uh, this time also involves uh, trumpets. Uh, verse uh, 2, uh, Lord Messiah is awesome. He's a great king of all the earth. I really love the word awesome. It's honestly one of my favorite words, <laughs> um, and it's one of my, one of the favorite parts in liturgy for me personally. Uh, the part where it says um, "awesome and full of glory." Uh, it's nice. It's just yeah, Christ is just awesome. Uh, it, yes, in the sense that we fear and revere, but also it's just his awesome is so good. It's like so amazing, excellent, whatever other uh, adjective you want to use. But uh, it's a nice awesome is a nice word. Uh, because he's the king of kings and lord of lords. He's the great king of all the earth. Capital K. Uh, verse uh, 3. He will subdue the peoples under us and nations uh, under our feet. So who? what's going on here? Who is the uh, being subjected? Subdue the peoples under us and nations under our feet. What's, who, who's being subjected? Like Who's, who's ruling over who? So um, uh, Bishop Yusuf was saying that... Uh, the people will uh, submit to the Gentiles. Sorry, to the Gentiles will, will submit to the apostles uh, and the saints, because they're the ones that are like you know, like ambassadors, and they're honored, and they're like adorned. So we subdue the peoples under us, and the nations under our feet. So uh, the, uh, you know, the, the, uh, we, we we submit to 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 uh, to these people. Um, but I think more importantly, it's, it's prophetic. It's prophetic talking about how the Gentiles will lead the people, uh, and particularly the, the, the apostles. Uh, later on, that, uh, so they, 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 this is like a future prophecy about how the ambassadors and the saints uh, will, will people be subjected to them because they're the right people. They're the, they're the righteous people. They're the source of people that have power. Okay. That's what, again, what Amber Yusuf was saying. Uh, verse 4, he will choose the inheritance for us, saves them, Jacob, whom he loves. And so just again, like how we're chosen. We're chosen people. Um, and Ephesians uh, 1 Three to five, three says that I really it's uh, just yeah we, we're just very special people and you should never uh, never forget that um, we're God's chosen people. Bless we Lord God our Father who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing just as He chose us in Him before the foundation of the world. So we should be holy and without blame before Him just as He chose the apostles and the saints. The, later on the the saints. 
to be the uh, people that uh, you know kind of like rule the world, the reign, and they're, they're and therefore people we are subject unto them. It's not it's not like uh, the kings; they are subject to. It's not like the kings, uh, the, the apostles and saints are subject to the kings the other way around, because the saints and the apostles and later, the, of course, the Gentiles who uh, followed Christ um, were the uh, people in God's eyes who brought people out into subjection. Just a couple more things to say. We said here, God has gone up with the shout, the Lord with the sound of the trumpet, just like it says here in, uh, we mentioned in Joshua uh, 6, taken over uh, Jericho, they used the trumpet. Uh, according to Bishop Rizzo, the trumpet's a very loud, uh, the loudest kind of instrument you can use. Um, so it really gets the point across. Maybe it's probably that's why they used it in the uh, uh, capture, the, the, the feat of uh, the capture of Jericho. Um, and also, uh, it's a form of victory. It's a memory of victory. And uh, it will be used in the second coming. The angel will sound the trumpet. Six, sing praise to God, sing praise, sing praise to our king, sing praises. But four times. Another time is the verse after, so five times. Sing praise with understanding. Again, just for emphasis, I think. Um, and... Um, we want to pray with understanding. We don't, we're not parrots. We don't use vain repetition. Yes, we use repetition, but not vain repetition. Uh, we want to pray with understanding. And I was reading this book, The Art of Prayer, in reverse, but The Art of Prayer. And if one thing I really took out of it is that the goal is, if possible, or as much as possible, pray with understanding. Do whatever you can to pray with understanding. So we should make every effort to pray with understanding, learn the words, Pray in a language that we know as much as possible, of course, as well. Make efforts to really learn and go into depth. And this is why we're doing the Psalms. What's the point of me of us learning the Psalms? Okay, like vain repetition, if we don't have any meaning. So this is what I was telling my friend. I'm like, I don't just want to learn the Psalms, uh, make an effort to all learn all these Psalms. Uh, I want to get the meaning as much as possible. This is the goal. You don't just want to learn, write, learn Bible verses without gaining the meaning. Uh, and you don't just want to learn like uh, Bible trivia without gaining understanding. So we want to sing praise with understanding as much as possible. That's not easy at all, but we ask God to give us His grace and help us. Um, God reigns over the nations. God sits on His holy throne. Again, only the one Christ is one who has the holy throne. Um, and um, I guess the last thing is really it's just talking about how the prince of the people have gathered together people of the God of heaven so who are the princes? they refer to like the leaders, the nobles um, and for the shields of the earth belong to God Like I ask myself this question what's, who are the shields? What are, what's the shields of the earth? So these are the strong ones or the kings. So the, in the end, all the powerful, quote-unquote, inverted commas, powerful people, they all belong to God. Um, and he is the one who reigns. He's got a holy reign, of course. It's not just an uh, earthly reign. It's a holy reign. Christ has a holy reign. Um, and, yeah, uh, I think that's really about it. Uh, and he is greatly exalted. Uh, and as we should say, so this this psalm is used in the um, in the liturgy end of the, each liturgy the, after the priest uh, closes the curtains after the dismissal. The priest goes around the altar and he he says he recites this psalm forty seven. Oh, clap your hands, all your peoples. Close the side, he claps. So he claps the altar. Okay. Or you can also kiss, it, kiss the altar. Claps, claps, goes around. He should say this psalm. This is another advantage of a priest learning the psalm. If the priest doesn't know the psalms, he's not going <laughs> to recite the psalm, and he's going to need a book. So yeah, uh, he's supposed to say that. Why? Because we're joyful. We're joyful after having Holy Communion. We're praising God. 
So we want to clap, okay? We clap, and then it's an expression. We're shouting to God with the voice of triumph. Uh, even the dismissal itself, uh, it has prayers, or we're thankful. There's a prayer of thanksgiving after. And one of the prayers, the concluding prayers in Great Lent, the uh, somatos, that prayer is let us give thanks for the body of what we have just partaken so definitely related to Psalm 47 uh, lovely lovely Psalm the very last thing I, I think Bishop Yusuf was saying that it also refers to the resurrection why in verse 5 God has gone up with a shout gone up many obviously is from down to up so he's gone up with a shout so we see the subtle but clear reference to christ again nice psalm 47 that concludes uh third album.